Hey friend, today I'm going to take you through my workflow of making house drums on any sampler or drum machine. I'll show this by doing it on three different machines with different limitations and I'll create three different patterns to hopefully spark up some ideas that you can apply to your drums. And all of this is doable in software too if that's your preference and it's all a little easier than you might think. So across the years of making house music and beats, especially with hardware, I have a tendency to fly across a piece of gear and not really explain what it is I'm doing. So today I wanna to kind of downshift, take it slow and just lay it all out there. I also find that this is great practice and a way to productively procrastinate by setting the bar pretty low to getting something done creatively while making something that I can use later. And a lot of my best tracks started this way with just drums. So with that, let's get started with our first cheap drum machine, the Pocket Operator Rhythm. So of course, starting with the basics, I usually start with the kick and I know there's a tendency to make basically the loudest, most banging kick you can, but I prefer a bit more of a subdued kick, right? That's just more of a quick punch to the gut to kind of help hold the space and hold the rhythm of everything, right? It's kind of the driving force. So I'll press right here and I usually do a typical four on the floor. There's a lot of limitations with the rhythm because I can't really do any volume changes. Um, and I can't really smooth out this kick. I would love for the decay to be a bit more boom, boom, but right now it's just like, but, 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 right? There's a sharp attack and a sharp release of the sound, but that's okay. We'll work with what we got. So next up, let's do the classic up hat, right? So selecting the sound, same thing here. Sometimes you want to get that fully open kind of 909, right? I really like these staccato sharp drums because they work really well with swing and they leave a lot of space, especially for me, when it comes to applying samples or a bass line, they leave a lot of space for the sample to kind of live and breathe within the, the realm of the drums. And this will also, uh, here watch, we'll put this in real quick. That's too loud. One thing I can do, hold the right down and really shorten it up. Again, I wish I could change this volume. This volume is way too loud for me, but it's okay, we'll work with it. That's cool there. Now, this is the most bare bones basic thing we've ever heard, right? Because it's just the kick and the open hat, the classic, right? The dogs and dogs and dogs, and there's no cats yet. Well, add the cats with the clap. I mean, you know what, we're here. Wide as well, right? This is what you would expect. But before we get there, let's add some closed hats to kind of balance out just the open hat. So we have this sound here. This is our closed hat. We'll open this up a little bit. The one downside of the rhythm, I can't actually like hear it and change it while it plays unless I put the pattern in and then write that um, automation in there, which works too. A pattern that I used to use a ton, and I still do a bit, is the classic da da cut, da cut. So it goes right, or you can do this one da 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 da. That works too, right? Da da da. And again, here's another thing you need to be wary of: this open hat which falls on all of these. On some drum machines, your open and your closed hat are in a choke group together, which means they'll only allow one or the other to play at the same time. We're lucky here that on the rhythm, all 16 tracks can be played at the same time, so there's not really that much of a limitation. But if we wanted to, we can apply that limitation to ourselves mentally. So I can say, maybe I don't want this here. It shouldn't exist there. Let's place it here. And then this will be cool here. Ta, ta, ta. When I'm doing these drums, I really want to kind of create this movement, this kind of like jerky weirdness that kind of gets your body moving almost subconsciously. And a lot of times I'm here trying to figure out like where it's gonna kind of pull me and it might look like I'm convulsing, but essentially this is kind of what I want. Well, I don't want people to convulse on the dance floor, but I, I want people to move and feel it on the dance floor, right? So this here, I'm down with that, right? And then if we were to throw in the clap, let's go ahead and shape that up a little bit. 
Let's try, let's try this for now and we'll, the pitch is a little too high. So I'm gonna just hold down right and move that. Okay, cool. You can see bees jumping around. That's probably from a previously recorded pattern. I guess just ignore that for now. Here's another important thing. See, everything to me seems important, but when I'm making these beats or these drum patterns, I just do this almost without thinking at this point. Swing, you need swing. Swing is very, very important. Well, if you want swing, it's very important. I'm gonna hold down BPM. This is with no swing. There, I guess there was already a little bit of swing on there. You can hear it's very dry, almost soulless, which can work, right? But it's not what we want. Yeah. And then this, this hat here can be a little longer. That's cool, right there. I like it there. Let's see what the pitch is like. Yeah, I like that pitch there. So I take a lot of my inspiration from Detroit house music. It's one of my favorite styles of music. It's one of my favorite cities. If you're there right now, when the D, what up, doe? Uh, you know, they just have such an amazing way to have swing and complexity, especially within these one bar patterns. And then eventually they extend it to two and kind of add a couple different things in there. So one thing I wanna add to this is some sort of a percussion element just in the second half or starting in the second half of the first bar. Cause this is cool. And this is by no means really Detroit house music, but pulling inspiration from that into realms of what we're doing is kind of where creativity lives, right? We hodgepodge and piece things together. So with that being said, maybe I want a, that's kind of cool. Let's go to that sound and kind of mess around with it. See what we can do, get out of it. Or here's the other thing. Now that I've selected the sound, you can see where it's placed. So I can turn record off. And now I can hit record and just turn off and turn on these steps again. I mean, this is kind of a dope house beat. From here, I would go ahead and just add some samples to this and kind of keep it moving. Again, there's a lot of limitations to this. Sure, we have a couple different uh, ratcheting kind of things that you can do. I don't do them too often. For example, if I were to select this sound, I can place one here and then maybe ratchet three times, I think. All right, I don't really like that, maybe here. That's kind of cool. Let's try that again. Yeah, see, it's cool, but whatever. I don't, I don't really like it that much. I mean, you got all the other. Okay, moving on to the next drum machine here. We're gonna be messing around with the black box. The reason I chose this is because I get a bit more mix control over my volume as well as a velocity slider, which is a little weird, but you can kind of get used to it and you get the idea of what I'm chasing after. Not only that, we get a little bit of more mixing capabilities with the high pass, low pass, little dual filter thing that it's got going on. So, okay, we'll go to our sequences right now. Ignore the sequencing on this thing because it is kind of a trip. I mean, I could technically build it all in one sequence, but you know what, maybe I'll do that. So anyway, we're in sequence one here. I'm gonna go back to pads. I usually rock my sequences to match whatever the pads are. All these samples here are from samples from Mars, really good samples if you ever are looking for some really good ones and or if you like these. So essentially, we got this going here. I can go in and look at our info and I can just sequence pad one if I really want it. So I'm just gonna put this down because I have the metronome turned down so I don't hear the metronome, which is totally fine but I'm gonna just leave it at that. Same thing, four on the floor. Now, ta, 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 right? Again, I'm kind of creating this tension. I want ta, 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 ta. Like it kind of pulls you forward and kind of jerks you around a little bit. So, that's actually great. I'm gonna undo that. We'll go ahead and go here, right? Which is what I want to do. If we were to look at this in the sequence, it's early, early, right before, right before the one. If we wanted that on, it would sound like this. 
that's whack. We don't want that. I mean, I don't want that, right? That's what I want there. Now listen to what this sounds like when you throw in an open hat. So if we go to our sequences here and we look at uh, tr track four, already there's just kind of this movement, this groove, right? Let's add some swing to this. Cool, that's fine there. Again, we can do the classic, right? If we wanted, oh, hold on, let me launch this one. Dun, dun. Okay, so where's the velocity in all this, right? You mentioned velocity, what's up with that? Where, when are we gonna hear some velocity? We'll check it out right now. We have another hi-hat. Oh, I'll do it with this little clave. And I wanna just record a couple of these in. So we'll go to sequence, I'll launch that one. Now I'm gonna bring the velocity slider down and add some more. If we listen to the, just this, and what I did there to do this is if I select this one here, I'll clear this one out. We'll launch the kick again. And I'm gonna play this clave again. What I did was try to play triplets on top of the full velocity version. And this kind of helps me get these uh, off kilter drum beats that I keep talking about. Right, I'll do that. And then I'll just put this at a low velocity. Let's make sure it's not too, that'll work, maybe a little higher. So then watch. And if there's too many in there, you can just go in and edit this sequence. So maybe I don't want this one. And I want this one right there. Yeah, I dig that. And then you go back to your sequences, bring the clap in. Right, there's a little bit of movement here. Bring the open hat. If you want this to be a bit more powerful, we can go and I'll say info. I really enjoy pitching things down, which is why I chose this hi-hat specifically is because the pitch is so high, high pitch, but I can, I can even bring it down to here and again, make this more staccato. We'll go over to our amp envelope, turn our sustain down, release down, but turn our decay up. I like that. This is where I like to live in this more shorter kind of purposeful hit. It doesn't take up too much space. It doesn't let, um, it lets a lot of other things breathe. Now you can hear that the clap sounds like it's almost elongated. Same thing, let's go to our clap, and do the same thing. Sustain all the way down, release all the way down. Just play with the decay. Let's go to this clave here. I'm gonna turn the volume down of this in general. And then we have our filter. So the filter allows me to go high pass or low pass. I'm gonna go all the way high pass and just start bringing it back just until I can hear it. Right, now I know I'm listening to the frequencies that matter the most to me while cutting out all the ones that don't. And this again will give us more room in the mix when it comes to kind of gluing everything together. Now, you can add snares to this if you wanted. So let's see where I have some snares. Uh... Oh, you know what's a fun one to do with uh, house music as well is to kind of reinforce the kick. So in the moments when you do take the kick out to kind of create a bit of a break, you can have something hold the rhythm. I'll use a tambourine or a shaker. So I have this sample here or this one here. This one actually needs to be maybe about here. So uh, we'll go back to our pads and I'll say either four. This one works a little better for me. So we'll say a sequence. Again, it's really loud. We'll go to our info, bring the level down, filter up. That's cool. And then same thing here, sustain down. And 
what's fun with this, watch this. We'll go to our pads and I'm gonna go ahead and take these sequences out. I'm gonna play this tambourine but quieter and just do a Don't know why that started playing. Oh, buddy. Did I just put that in the wrong spot? My bad. That's probably why. So we'll turn that off. We'll go to the sequence here. Bring our tambourine down. Da, da. There it is. Kind of creates a little bit of a space, right? It keeps the rhythm there, kind of keeps it moving. We'll say... Right? You can still hear that there's like... One and two and three and four. Listen to it without it. It's like way in the background, but it matters so much. It's not a main element, but all of a sudden it becomes a main element. But if the kick was back in, it's back there. Like it's doing its thing, it's whatever. You don't really notice it. You can even take it out. And like this still kind of holds itself, right? And then watch, you replace those two. Bring everything back in. Yeah, banging drums right here. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and do something like this and we'll say info. We'll make the step count uh, 32 steps here. And this will give us a little bit more of an interesting um, pattern, I guess. I mean, it, I feel like I'm inflating that term, right? But all I'm going to do is just add the kicks again. We'll zoom in here. And all I'm going to do is just say, but see, I want to add something in here. But again, it's too loud. So I'll just go here, run the sequence, and I'm pulling this velocity down. There, that's all I wanted to add. Just a little boom, boom, watch. We can even add another one in the middle of this after the one bar. Uh, dun, 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 dun. A little early to watch. Dun, dun. There it is, right? Simple. All right, last but not least, the Digitac, my tried and true workhorse. Uh, I use this for almost all my drums at this point. So anyway, let's kind of continue on with the theme. Classic, four on the floor, right? Easy peasy. I'll get a couple of hi-hats, same thing. So here I can play the drum, the two drums at the same time. Um, you could do this on a ton of things, but I like to kind of, right? Play something in, it's unquantized right now, so you can hear it super off. I'll just go ahead and globally quantize everything. Track four though, I actually want this to be here. And similarly to the rule I was sort of giving myself on the rhythm, I don't want the closed hat to be on any of the spots where the open hat can be. Another way we can do this is I can take a look at this pattern here, get rid of it, and I can go to track four and I'll just parameter lock this to be what was on sample three. So it's this closed hat sound, and this is an open hat sound. What I can do here is I can copy this, and I can say, all right, this paste it here, paste it here, paste it here. What I can do with this now, though, is I can paste it here and really lock out that open hat. This is cool, but the problem with this is when I go to mute this in a performative way, I'm muting that entire track, and I cannot only mute the closed hat. So I personally, don't prefer to work this way, but I appreciate the idea of locked voices or or choked voices that can't be heard. So going back to this, I would put track three here, maybe put the closed hat here on track four. I don't need those, I just want these here. So we have this and, uh, right? But this track four, I know these two right here shouldn't technically work. So I'm just gonna go ahead to this step and I can either do a decay of the amp envelope and lock it here, or alternatively, I can hold down function, put a trigless trigger here, and just turn the volume off. And then, just to be safe, I can say, all right, copy that, paste it here, so this two are silent. The benefit here is I can copy these and maybe put it, put it here too. 
And that kind of gives it this weird little movement, right? It's da, 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 da. And this is actually another thing to kind of mention as well. On um, like the MPC Live, as well as my older MPC 4000, its default mode was, was uh, gate on, I think is what it was called. Where, see how I'm, I'm tapping this? It just plays the whole thing through. The, the release was like this. So I would have to like, and I wonder if I can do that here. Let's see, let's try that. Cool, it does, but it's not as cool as how it was earlier. It could use a little bit more refining. Yeah, see, it's fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in here, turn our decay up, do this and do what I did before, which was hold these two down and turn the volume down and copy that, paste it here. I think this has a, a bit cooler of a movement or a, a feel to it. Going back to our closed hats, we want velocity, right? There's no velocity sensitivity here. There's no touchscreen velocity slider. A lot of other drum machines have velocity sensitive pads. This one doesn't. But what I can do on here is parameter lock. So I can hold this step down and I'm just pressing yes to preview the step with those changes. So that's a little too quiet, but what I do want to bring down overall is just the general level of this track. And same with the open hat. So maybe now that we have this parameter locked with some lower velocity, I can copy this and paste it maybe here. You hear that? I mean, I'm saying it as if it's pitch, but I'm really trying to uh, vocalize velocity. I think that that's actually kind of cool. Same thing with our claps. Let's do something different here. So typically what you would expect is this. What I really like, if you want to get super funky, I've been into these weirder rhythms lately. Even this closed hat is kind of a too straightforward rhythm for me nowadays, but check this out. I'm going to put a clap early before the five. Again, evoking that, ah, pull me into it, ah, and then release, tension, release, tension, release. Let's go to track three and we'll get rid of this. And that actually sounds really cool because it chokes here, right? Now the clap is being choked by this open hat. So let's find this little percussion sound. I'm gonna go ahead and pitch this up. Check this out. I've been doing some funky rhythms on this thing by maybe just putting the step here and turning re-trigger on. Similarly, again, like on the rhythm, why can I never remember its name? The PO12, the rhythm, you can have these ratchets, but these ratchets are a bit different. They last longer than just the step itself. So right now, this re-trigger is on for a length of a quarter at a rate of a 16. So it's just gonna go ta 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 ta. That's whatever, right? But watch, you got 12 on here. Yo, that's tight. If you paste that over here. Right, do something like that, that's tight. And then maybe I can go here and even set this to 10. That's actually really tight. I'm gonna leave it at that. So another thing we learned on the black box was using that high pass, low pass filter for some mixing things. We can do the same thing here. This percussion's cool, right? But I want to take some of the low end out of this. So on the second page of my filter, you have a very basic bass width filter. So again, turning it all the way up, it cuts a lot of the low end out and I'll just start bringing it back. Cool, I like that right there. Maybe give it a little bit of reverb. What does it sound like without the clap? Yeah, 
Sometimes I'll make an entire track and completely forget the clap. Again, we kind of advance and pick up different techniques and styles and sounds that we like and we get tired of others. Sometimes we don't like claps directly on the five and the 13. Sometimes we want them on the four and the 13. Sometimes we want them just purely early. Or, or how about this? Right, this is like super build up here. Right, or let's say, uh, or even late, half time, right? How about this? How about we mix that up with a snare as well? So we'll do this and then we'll say, we'll take this sound here and I'll find myself a little SD, AKA snare drum. Sure, we'll do this. There's a lot of bass in that. We'll take that bass out. So then we'll say, or we want this to be a bit more kind of tribally, or we can get even weirder and say every track has its own pattern, and I'll say uh, seven steps. Oh, Whew. yo. So the reason it's actually working and not just tailing off forever is this M length, main length or master length. It's set to 16. This means every 16 steps, it will reset the pattern. If we were to watch it, you can see right there, boom, it resets. So it only makes it 14 steps plus two is 16 and then it resets. If you were to set that to, let's say 32 steps, which is two bars, To me, that's a little too crazy, right? I like living in these weird, funky one bar patterns. If I were to try and draw this out in a regular 16 step pattern, what would that look like? Maybe it's here. Yeah. Right, so that's the 14 step pattern there, resetting normally as it would. But I discovered that using this little eight step weird seven step reset on the 16, right? So let's refine this a bit more. We kind of have a couple things going on. Basically, this snare drum's a little too loud for my liking. Same thing, I think it could be high pass even more. And I'll even use one of these filters just to boost up. just some frequencies where it really hits and then I'll just turn it down, turn the reverb up. Now, here's another thing that's bugging me. This clap is just too big, right? You'll start to notice once you start pulling other elements around and kind of shortening them or EQing them or filtering them, other weirder things start sticking out. And also, another. here's another important tip Take a break once in a while, take a step back, go for a walk, go grab a coffee, a tea, some water, go stare at a bird, do something else besides just staying here because you won't, your ears will just get, it's like monkey house syndrome, right? You go into a place that smells bad, it stinks at first, but then you kind of get used to it and you forget that it's there until you leave and come back. So right now I kind of left, talked to you for a split second, came back. Why is my clap so huge? Why is it so loud, right? Let's bring that down and shorten it up. I even think this percussion sound could be even shorter. So let's try that. Ah, it can't be that much shorter, but you know what we can do? We can play with the velocity. So going back to this weird, uh, I'll just throw the kick in there. Damn, that sounds so sick. Look at this. This is the sickest beat I've ever heard. Well, well not really. Exaggeration, of course, but it's two elements. Right? Throw some chords in here. Oh, forget about it. Let me find some chords. Give me one second. Oh, this is from the uh, my Deckard's Dream sample pack. Link to it down below. Listen to this. How was that?
Yo, that's it right there. That's it. You see what I'm saying? We're here adding, adding, adding. What else can you do? What can you, what else can you take away is the real question there. Cause I mean, sure, this might work with everything going. Let's see. Sure, it's kind of cool, but it's almost cheesy. It's almost expected, right? I don't like this. I don't like the snare. But we'll take that out. Now this open hat is way too loud for my type for my tastes, my tastes. Super short. Let's pitch it down. Minus three. There it is. Yeah, right? Less is more. Less is so much more. Yo. Oh, you know what else I'll show? Uh, the ride. The ride is super important. Um, so track three is this closed hat. We could rock it. I mean, this is another fun pattern just to do the classic ta 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 ta. You, s I, I should say, like to do lower velocity first. Ta 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 ta. Right. So we have. Right. So this will say a little lower. I'll copy these two, and then uh, paste, paste, paste. Right. Same thing. You play that with everything. But we want to replace that with a ride, right? So it's a closed hat now, that's fine. But if it was a ride, it really adds a lot of uh, uh, texture to the um, track. So we'll go to track three, source, and I'll just, oh, where'd it go? I just heard it. There it is. And that's the same velocity. You want it to reinforce the open hat. So we'll bring this down. in we'll say uh, 64 steps and then reset every 64 as well awesome there we go and now that I'm getting this main part in I can go ahead that's already quantized now I can hear where I want this snare to land right because I thought this snare was kind of annoying right it was like Kind of placed randomly. I got the elements in, I kind of start adding the samples, and then I kind of start reshaping my drums around that. Similarly, we'll clear this out. I'm gonna go to track three, which is that ride. I'm gonna turn it way down. And then bring it up a little bit until I just hear it. And then go up a little bit more. And then go to our filter, same thing, high pass it like crazy. back. What's the little sample rate on this sound like? Yo, that's mean. Oof. Let's lower these uh, four a little more. Oh, I accidentally put that there, but I am so for it. Actually, you know what? Here, we'll do this. I'll say uh, condition one out of every two. Or two out of every two. Now, let's go to our snare. There it is. That's all I wanted. How about same thing here? We'll just put this on one of every two. Right there. Throw that to the reverb like crazy. Now we'll go to track seven, which is that, uh, again, beautiful. Take this pattern, I'm gonna go to 10, paste this. You already know what we're gonna do, you probably don't, because I have, I'm jumping pretty far ahead here. 
We're gonna be in pattern 10, and now we'll go ahead and just do this. Right, and same thing, we can use this hat or this ride to kind of hold down the space of our kick. Or we can do the opposite and let our kick be exactly what we need it to be, a kick. Hold space for us, hold the rhythm, hold the beat, the heartbeat. This ride is gnarly, I love that. Let's go ahead and turn our uh, compressor on. Got a little louder, that's okay. Makeup gain down. Downside here, all the patterns are kind of independent, so if I were to go ahead and jump back to pattern nine, all this is gonna change. That's fine. We'll just jam it here, we'll just say nine. Go to 10. Awesome, go back to nine. Oof. There it is, folks. You saw it here, three different drum beats on three different machines. Hopefully you learned something. I've been wanting to do this one for a little while because I've just been having a ton of fun just making crazy drum beats on here. Right, simple. Simple as you would expect. Check out this one, this one's actually kind of fun. There's a sample in here. I don't know where it's at, but that's kind of the main. Here's another one, right? They're just drum beats, that's all. Whoa, easy there, partner. I mean, you're going through the, the history and the archives of all my random uh, things, but you get the idea. We ended up here and it is sick. Two down with this, I'll leave it at this. There it is, anyway. Appreciate you. Oh, muted the sample. I appreciate you. Hope to see you again next week. If you want to support the channel, I sell some synth hats and synth merch and stuff like that at this website here. But you kicking it is more than enough. And until next week, my friend, it's always good to, so good to see you. Share the love, share the love. <laughs> Messing up. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.